church is doing. I hear in social media all the time, it's like, uh, I, I'm giving the tithes to my church, but my offerings, I'm giving it to the, this organization and that organization and that organization because I see what they're doing in our community. We can't just talk about it. We have to be about it. Right. Hypocrisy. Phil Judge, found church boring, lack of support, abuse situation. This right here is going to become a bigger topic going forward. I had a conversation with a, with a uh, spouse, a woman, and my wife and I have a program um, every week, and she said, I, I, would, I would like to talk to you guys about some things in my marriage, and we had a conference call, and she said, she said, um, my husband uh, was unfaithful and left with another woman and three months later came back and asked me to forgive him and I have forgiven him um, but I'm finding it really rough and he's never done anything like that before but I was really hurt by what happened and we just listened to her and then she said and our pastor when he came to visit me while he was gone told me you know Problems are not always 100% of, 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 there's always two for every problem. Like, and I'm thinking to myself, why would you say that? Somebody's hitting you, somebody's abusing you, you know, I mean, this is the cross you have to bear. You, you remember that Jesus says, forgive. And I remember as a young pastor trying to do stuff I'm not qualified to do. I am not a counselor. So my word to you is refer, 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 and don't, don't doubly victimize the people who are already suffering, listening, listen to what they're saying. When somebody tells you, like I had a, 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 an elder or a deacon that touched me inappropriately when I was pat, in Pathfinders, and I'm really hurt about what happened in the church and how I got pregnant out of wedlock and they brought me to the front of the church and they showed me to the church and they disciplined me and erased me from the books in front of the congregation because we want to send a message to the rest of the congregation that this is bad and when they wouldn't dedicate my kid that was born out of wedlock only in the pastor's study and when they did that I felt very hurt by the church and I'm trying to process that our response is not well you know not everybody's like that you can find another church you know Jesus is not like our response should be I'm sorry I am sorry I am sorry sorry this happened to you sorry 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 I've had people ball out and cry because in all the years there was always people trying to defend the church God is big enough so he can defend himself not your job to defend the church not your job to defend Christ just say I'm sorry this happened to you how can we make it better what do you need when somebody is have they, they has profound wounds the deeper the wound the fewer the words I just want to help you process this this is going to be a bigger issue Especially coming out of the pandemic. Lots of abuse, a lot of stuff is happening. Like we're not, I've, I've had young ladies tell me, uh, this deacon touched me inappropriately, or this member of the church, the pathfinder leader touched me inappropriately, and, and I told the pastor, and I told the elders, and they said, please don't report them, because you're gonna ruin their lives. That person ruined his own life when they chose to abuse you. You're not, you're not ruining anybody's life. So this is going to be an incredibly important, if you're not a counselor, don't pretend you are one. Listen and refer, refer, refer. There is a lot of unprocessed pain in the pews. In Hispanic congregations where I was raised in, 6.5 out of 10 girls have been sexually abused. I mean, it's just, it's a pandemic. Nobody ever talks about it. We don't talk about 
We just pretend that everything is good and we're getting perfected so Jesus can come and take us. And there's pain and pain and pain. And all of a sudden, one day they're like, man, I'm not finding healing. That's where Jesus comes in and the gospel. And I have to understand there are reasons why people leave. It's not my job to try to defend my congregation. Initially, I just want to listen to what they're saying and help them process their pain. All right? Why did you leave? So, as I, uh, I was thinking about my brother and my other brother who's not, neither of them are, are members of the church. I was thinking about their lives and I was thinking about how can, what, what kind of church could they come back to? Um, during the pandemic, I just, just wrote this book called Ramp and, and you're going to get it. And, and it's just a simple four-step process. The resource is just like a hammer. It's only good if you use it. So if you want to use the resource in your church, right? I, since I wrote it, even though it's sold in different places, if you want to use the resource in your church, I, I'm going to give you, they're going to give you, I said, I am, they, they bought a physical copy for you. But I have the PDF format. And if you want it, you want to use it in your congregation, I will give you the PDF format so you can use it with your congregation. Because it's, as we're coming out of this pandemic and people are not showing back, there needs to be some strategy. I know that we might not get everybody who left. I know that everybody who's in the rows of the church are not going to come back. But if we do nothing, nothing is going to happen. So I just believe about doing something. So touch the person next to you and say, do something. I don't care what it is, but just do something. So if you want the PDF version, just let me know when we're done and say, hey, I want a PDF version. And I'll, I will, I'm going to send it to the ministerial director so he can send it to you guys. If you want to use it with your boards, it's very easy. What you do is you preach a series of four sermons based on the concept of ramp. And then you have your congregation read it. To make sure that when the people who have left start to come back, your church functions more like an incubator and not an omelet maker. Right? I had a, um, this last story and then we're going to go eat. I had a young adult, uh, I had a, a mother of three young adult girls come and talk to me and say, Pastor, I was their pastor. And I have been gone for 10 years. He said, remember my three daughters? They have left the church. And I want you to pray for them so they can come back. And I said, sure, I'll pray. I'll pray for them. But then I thought about it. And I know what type of church that is. And I know that there, it, was the, it was the Spanish church and they were divided between Central Americans and South Americans. And I know... There was a constant battle, and the reason why they left is because a new pastor came in, and they were like, you know, they couldn't speak uh, Spanish that well. And that pastor, their highest value was not the gospel, but preserving Hispanic culture, right? It's like, you can't speak well, you can't be in the platform. And they started to disconnect, and now all of a sudden, they're not coming anymore. And I, I know I want to pray for them to come back to church. I don't know if I want to pray for them to come back to that church. Because they're going to experience the same trauma they, that caused their departure in the first place. right? So there is a work that needs to be done in our congregations. So when these prodigals return, we tell them, not I told you so, but I love you so. Thank you very much. God bless you. See you tomorrow.